Hello friends. Today's video is going to be a compilation of a little bit of chicken yard maintenance, filling the potato bins with the chicken compost or the chicken run compost that we've been collecting. And then I'm going to head over to the project garden number two and I'm going to show you the progress I've made on the weeding that we've done. But first off, we're in the chicken yard. As you can see, it's muddy. They've dug a lot of holes. Uh, the soil is pretty filled with organic matter. It's It's retaining water so anytime the sprinklers come on it's just creating pools that they're drinking out of which isn't the healthiest thing so we're going to turn this dirt over today and we're going to let them have some access to some worms and also get this uh, ground broken up so that they can uh, have a cleaner area before we put some hay and, and straw down this ground is very moist easy to dig so i'm just basically flipping the soil over allowing them access to the worms. Now they'll kick through this material over a number of days and uh, they'll eat every worm that they can find and every bug. But right now I'm noticing that I'm not seeing a lot of uh, bugs. I think the ground is so moist that it's kind of forced them out of it. It's a little uh, anaerobic right now. So using the spade and breaking up the soil will allow it to drain again because the chicken's feet have really packed this uh, material down and so it's like a It'd be the perfect for the bottom of a pond. You know, run chickens on the bottom of a pond, let them pound the dirt down, and then, uh, you know, retain water. And that's exactly what's happening here. As I get done uh, digging this dirt over, um, I'm going to be pulling the material out from under the, the house. I've got a raised chicken coop. It's got a lot of straw and weeds and miscellaneous things under there. So I'll use that as a, as a layer to go on top of this material. And then I'll bring in some fresh uh, hay that's in the back of my truck right now that I just need to bring in here. But I'll give them a couple days to work through this material, let it dry out a little bit before I uh, put the fresh hay down. Now I'm not going to turn over the entire uh, chicken run today. I'll do it in stages so that they have access to the worms. And so it's not just feast or famine. I'll give them a few days of, uh, of material to work through and then flip some more so that they can... Uh, have a good good snack. So here's a look at my entire flock enjoying the overturned earth and uh, they'll have access to this earth for a few days before I cover it back up with hay. Now we're moving on to the next project which is taking this chicken compost uh, from the chicken run that's been heating up and cooling down over the last few months and I'm going to use it to fill the potato bins uh, because the, the secret of the potato bins is, as the plants grow, you continue to add material up to the top so that the stems will continue to root out and produce more potatoes, as well as you want the, all the tubers to be covered. You never want the sun touching the potatoes. Now, as you can see, here's a full potato bin filled with that compost, and I've got to do the entire bed. I'm not going to show you every bit of filling these. That'd be a little redundant, but it's a little bit of a walk from the bin to the potatoes, but not too bad. And I have 12 bins, I believe, uh, so that I've just got to fill each one and uh, make sure they're all topped off. And this material, if you saw the thermometer, is still 96 degrees, so it may be a little warm. I may be a little premature adding this material. What I'm hoping it'll do is it'll just leach into the soil uh, where their tubers are growing, and uh, it'll just be kind of like a liquid compost every time I water. There's Mr. Lincoln, and uh, you can see I've used about half the material up to this point for about half the barrel. So I use the whole amount to fill every one. Now here I'm getting to the end. This is the last bin, just topping it off. And I'm hoping it's gonna work. I hope I'm not gonna kill my plants because it's too warm. Uh, we're gonna see if there's any negative uh, impact from this, but so far so good. Everything looks good. Nice and, and uh, you know, some bins are doing better than others, but it's still gonna be a pretty good harvest it looks like. I'm excited for some uh, some new potatoes. Uh, we can dig them at any point. They haven't flowered yet, so it's better to let them flower uh, before you start trying to harvest any. But uh, they're about ready to flower. There's a few uh, blooms getting ready. Now here's the empty bin. I just got a little bit left that I'm going to scoop out and use throughout my yard. Uh, I'm going to probably use some where the uh, raspberries uh, have struggled recently. And I've lost them. But as you see, the chickens are all reaching through trying to get to those worms because there's a bunch of red wiggler worms in this bin. And like everything, we water in uh, everything we plant. I did water it before I put the material in just to make sure it was moist underneath. 
because it'll take a while for water, it take a lot of water to get all the way down to the bottom. So this is the second soaking. And then here's the raspberry bed that I put some uh, the extra compost. Uh, so hopefully this will enrich the soil and uh, those raspberries can start to uh, grow back into that area. For whatever reason they died off, maybe it was just time. Maybe the, the those were older plants that need to be replaced. So anyway, they'll grow back into this and uh, we'll thicken the bed up and it'll be a good raspberry harvest, I believe, in the future. Now we're transitioning back to project garden number two. And this is some old footage that I took in May before we started ripping the weeds out, or just as I started ripping the weeds out. Uh, on the beds. As you can see, I've done some of it, and then you see here, this was all the mess that we had. Just it goes all the way down. Lots of grass, lots of weeds. Uh, there's some sun baked areas. I did notice when I'm digging this soil that there's tons of life. Uh, found lots of little uh, cocoons and little bugs and lots of worms. Uh, so this is really healthy soil, it just needs to be weeded and needs to be covered. And here's a bare spot that's uh, getting sunbaked, and it's going to be a little of a challenge to pull these weeds out. Just need to, anytime you weed, you need to soak the area well, let it sit overnight so that you can get in with a shovel, because you got to dig down, loosen the soil, and get the roots. If you don't get the roots, you're just wasting your time. So here's a look at what I've accomplished, kind of taking the opposite view. It took me five extra hours today to get through this entire bed, and the rest of the bed anyway. So I'm a little tired, a little sore. My ribs are hurting a little bit, but I'm healing up. I think my ribs are just bruised, not uh, cracked. It doesn't appear. So got a lot of loose cartilage, but uh, it didn't feel too bad. Uh, the only part that hurt a little bit was carrying the buckets of, of you know, heavy grass and weeds that I pulled out. But it's ready for edging, and it's ready for bark. So just another day, this place is going to look great. And to conclude this video, my son made me aware that the babies have arrived and my, my quail families, I have two of them, and this is one pair that were just right outside my front window, so I got a really good look at all the babies. It's a little challenging trying to count them, but there's a bunch of them in there, so it's fun to see new life and I hope that they stick around for future generations. That concludes this video. I appreciate you spending your time with me today. If you like to watch this type of content, please subscribe to my channel like, share, and comment, because I'd love to hear from you. Thank you for your time.